Hello and welcome to Syndicate Stats, where we take a geeky look at our boys' race times with the help of Elliot Jackson's website, World Cup Stats. Today it's finals day in Fort William, and the crowds have come out in force to watch the 2.6km rocky, rough and physical World Cup racetrack, despite the pretty grim conditions. Now, with Luca returning from his recent broken collarbone, he finished up in 35th, but he still had some pretty solid splits and even going faster than Loris at the bottom section. Fort William is a track that really requires momentum all the way down, and without that you just end up falling behind pretty quickly. Let's let Luca talk about his race run before looking into it in detail. Dude, I don't know. I just uh, I didn't feel too bad, and I thought I thought I rode all right, but somehow went slower than yesterday, and was just way off the pace. So yeah. Like, I didn't make any mistakes, it was just weird, like, I just had no s momentum, I had no speed, like, yeah, I just couldn't couldn't get it going for some reason, and, uh, yeah, it's a shame, because I really felt like I was riding pretty good this week, consi all things considered, so, uh, have to, uh, sort our shit out for next weekend. Now, whilst Luca gets on with that, we can take a look at this graph, which compares how much time he lost to Loris. Luca being the black line, Loris being the green, and Greg being the purple. As you can see, at the top section he lost over 2.5 seconds to Loris, and nearly a second to Greg. Then in the all important large second sector is ultimately where Luca lost the majority of his time, nearly 9 seconds to Loris. Now these sections are mainly pretty fast, and require carrying good speed, but with Luca feeling unable to get the bike moving, and carry momentum explains how he lost so much time. Towards the bottom he started to gain a bit of momentum, even beating Loris in the final sector, but the time lost at the top was just impossible to claw back. This weekend also saw the return of the Greg we know and love. He finished up in 6th position, but admitted he struggled to find race pace, saying he might have been too focused on qualifying. Today we'll compare him with Danny Hart, someone who has arguably done the most amount of runs down this racetrack. Danny also finished in the final podium spot, just in front of Greg. In the graph here you can obviously see where Greg lost his time to Danny, Greg being the black line. Greg lost some valuable time to Danny at the top, losing 0.7 seconds to him, and then in the second sector just over one second, which has proved to be quite a critical section, featuring the new woods and the majority of the technical sections. The third sector is one of the shortest, and this is where Greg began his attack, pretty much neck and neck with Danny in this section. And then in the fourth, Greg's starting to take some time back, 0.25 seconds on Danny, and nearly one second on Finn Isles. He continued to gain some time back in the final sector, taking 0.79 back from Danny. Ultimately, Greg lost most of his time in the critical second section, even though he was eighth. If Greg went the same speed as Loris in this section, he would have finished just behind Loris by 0.09 and in fourth position. Now on to Loris. He finished up in third position, 3.5 seconds behind first placed Amory Pierron, and 3.5 seconds in front of fourth place. And these are the biggest time gaps we've seen in Fort William since 2007. Today Loris was locked into a battle with Troy, swapping positions all the way down, whilst the fastest man Amory Pierron seemed to be on another level. In the first section Loris was just a whisker behind Troy, 0.092 back. And then the critical second section. Loris made some time up on Troy, going 0.68 ball faster than him. This looked to put him in good stead for the bottom section. But in the third, short sector, Troy stormed ahead. Perhaps something to do with his inside lines after the road gap, which was visibly quicker on the live feed. In the fourth sector, Loris edged back in front of Troy, going 0.223 quicker. Going into the final sector, Loris was only 0.041 ahead of Troy. This is when the final section proved to be critical. Troy went 0.09 quicker than Loris, finishing just 0.049 ahead. These margins are almost unquantifiable, but to give you an idea of how close they actually were, over the entire track, Troy's average speed was only a James Bond in front of Loris, 0.007. 
I think after thinking about it, I feel like uh, I should have put a bit more like on the pedally section, section, just because I, I had some left, and I feel like uh, you should not give away seconds for nothing. Because uh, up top, like I was like, okay, rest as much as you can, and you'd be fresh on the bottom. And I felt like uh, I wasn't that dead at the end, so I should have been dead. But same, it would be like for second place and not first, so I'm still stoked. Bonsoir,